ಓಗರ್ತವಿವ ಸಂಪೃಕ್ತ ವಾಗರ್ತ ಪ್ರತಿಪತ್ತ ಜಗತ ಪಿತರೌ ವಂದೇ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರೌ ವಸುದೇವಸುತ ದೇವ ಕಂಸಚಾನೂರಮರ್ದನ ದೇವಕೀ ಪರಮಂದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಂದೇ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಹರಿ ಷ್ಟಿಯಾಂ ಕಕ್ಷಾಯಾಂ ಸರ್ವೇಶಾಂ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ವಿ ಹವ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದ ನಿಯರ್ಲಿ ದ ಮಿಡ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ವೀಕ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಪಿ ಪಿ ಟಿ ಆರ್ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಸಿ ನೌ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ದೃಶ್ಯತೆ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ನ ದೃಶ್ಯತೆ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆನ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ i think many of these questions are very important very valuable so uh, i am not taking all the questions partly because particularly last week several of the questions will be answered in today's uh, session because uh, what we were talking last week has actually a continuity so therefore i am not surprised there were several questions coming out of it in any case let me see how i should be in a position to give you some answers i am thinking about it i will select a subset of questions for every class because you know we want to spend about 15 minutes only on the questions but let me see if there is a way i can get back to you because these questions are good i think uh, we need to everybody must have the benefit of uh, knowing the question and possible answers let me think about it and see what can be done i will do something about it before the course ends okay so today i will take uh, some questions as usual uh so uh, what exactly are the vasanas because last class we just sort of uh, used in this word in one of the slides and left it at that so vasanas uh, see what happens is in every janma uh, we accumulate a lot of experiences impressions so many things happen see even when we do a very small thing in our life we learn from that and we accumulate uh, a skill a certain knowledge a certain sort of uh, intrinsic knowledge and so on imagine for the whole uh, janma we have been doing so many things so there is something which is developing and these accumulated uh, experiences deep anubhavas are all start shaping our our value system it all consolidates itself uh, uh, in its own way and that it shows up so that is called vasanas vasanas are that uh, deep uh, accumulation of all these experiences which seem to shape our value system which seems to provide a basis for us to do things in a certain way now this will go over several janmas now the question is is it possible i was just reminded of one uh, interview of uh, satguru jaggi vasudev i was just li- listening to it so he was telling that interview that lady he pointed to her nose and she said the nose that see, that is sitting on your face is the nose of your forefathers which is about 1000 years back he was trying to make a point so many of the genetic things that we are talking about are all coming from our forefathers which makes our physical construct our voice our all that kind of things now there is a psychological construct also which doesn't come come through the forefathers which is our own making so that is called vasanas so vasanas are those accumulated uh, things which drive our behavior which uh, sets a value system for us 
and this is in the subconscious mind now modern science calls this no they say that uh, there is a very minuscule part of the subconscious mind that we are aware but the subconscious mind is very deep and it has a lot in sanatana dharma we call exactly that idea as vasanas so that is what vasanas is now there is a very related point to it called samskaras so there is a question what what exactly are samskaras now samskaras and vasanas are two sides of the same coin just now i said that uh, there is a you know uh, uh, accumulation of a certain deep experience which seems to shape our value system we will take one example suppose somebody uh, did something very unfair to me did something which is very wrong very bad to me the question is how am i how am i going to react now i can ignore it altogether it can start from that end i can pardon that person and there is a whole gamut of possible uh, uh, ways of responding to it up to plotting and uh, give planning and plotting a revenge for him this much possibilities exist and thousand people will actually respond thousand ways and why are they doing it because it is the, the first the way they respond is because of their samskaras and where are these samskaras coming from they are coming from the vasanas in other words the vasanas is the repository and the samskaras is the manifestation of the vasanas in the actions that we do that's why they are you know you can look at it as two sides of the same coin now for in a particular situation gandhi ji react reacted in a particular way i will react in a particular way you will react in a particular way because our vasanas shows up as samskaras which we actually those are the samskaras are actually the manifestation of vasanas which leads us to you know respond to life situations in a particular way so they are very closely related to one another what is the difference between free will and will somebody asked me this question uh, technically there isn't any it's a it's a play of words in some ways in some ways in a uh, more or less they are they are sort of equivalent but the only thing is uh, in a philosophical or a vedantic a spiritual discussion the word free will is used because uh, it uh, emphasizes the point that uh, there is a choice in the hands of an individual and that individual must exercise the choice and the way the individual exercise the choice influences the trajectory of his progress only to bring that point this free is added to it so that uh, you know it gets emphasized there is another interesting question what about the ants and the bees are in they saving the food uh, for the future uh, so don't 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 they have free will because i was giving an example that the lion uh, will not uh, you know save the food uh, the deer and say let us put it in the fridge so so there was this question is coming now let me tell you not only ants and bees there are certain plant kingdom also does this but there is no free will these are all driven by simple programmed uh, uh, events happening in them it's not happening out of free will what is free will if if only ants had free will let us say then so many questions will come how much food to store where to store who will store it when should we take it out what quantum to take it out all these will become uh, issues for uh, you know uh, controversial discussions and positions fortunately they don't suffer from uh, these kinds of uh, issues so therefore uh, uh, they don't have free will the saving food for the future is a programmed uh, way they behave actually okay now we'll go to some more questions which are uh, also equally interesting uh, there is this question there is this observation we believe that our pitru devatas protect us what is your reflection on this driti can you go to another room please 
we believe that our Pitru Devatas protect us. What is your reflection on this? So uh, this is a very first of all, this is a very important thing. It is very much true. I very strongly believe in it. Now look look at this simple logic. Let's not get into you know if you can get into Mimamsha, one can get into Karma Kanda and uh, understand all these. Let us not go that far. We will take a simple logic. When we are living, when our parents and grandparents, particularly the parents, are living with us, if there is anything that happens to us, quite often, the first person and in most of the cases, the only people to come and sort it out are the parents. I think we all have our own experiences. From the time we are born, they are protecting us. And this is the very unique feature of parents. Just because they went out of this scene, are you telling us that they will stop doing it? I think that is a very narrow thinking. It doesn't matter where they stay. They can stay with us. They can stay elsewhere. But the fact that they will protect us will not go away. So Pitru Devatas definitely protect us. I don't have any iota of doubt. That is why in our scheme of things, if there is a Shraddha Karya to be done on a day and a Puja has to be done, the pecking order is it is always Pitru's first. You have to do the Shraddha Karya and if only time permits and it is possible, the Deva Puja. Otherwise, that day Deva Puja is not there. This is the reason for it. Pitrus are the Pratyaksha Devatas for us. They will protect us forever. If there is a person who doesn't believe in God, doesn't pray but truthful in nature, doesn't hurt anyone, and a good person who is liked by everyone, what about that person, sir? He is on a perfect path of progress because all his fundamentals are in place. Now, He's not believing in God is just like a passing cloud because uh, that's just a matter of time and uh, he or she will get into it eventually. Now, this believing in God is not a, sort of a blind belief. It is a deep experience and introspection and seeing the, 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 the charm of this creation. The God is visible in the creation. The law of conservation of divinity, when we spoke about, if the moment people start seeing it, they will start seeing God. And for a moment, they may not, for the moment, they are not seeing it, but they have all other fundamentals of living, leading a dharmic life. So I am not personally very bothered. I think they have a very high chance. Eventually, they will have to come there and they will come there. And nobody escapes that. If you see a wonderful painting, nobody says, is there any painter? People only ask, where is the painter? If there is a painting, people never ask, is there a painter? In the same way, when these wonderful creations is, uh, when somebody begins to see, turn attention onto it, that person will start seeing where is this person who created it, the God will come. So he will also do that. He or she will do that. Do we have Swarga or Naraka for Punya Karma and Papa Karmas? Now, the Swarga and Naraka are very important concepts. First, get the concept right. It is only saying that if somebody does an act of goodness, that will not go in vain. Similarly, if somebody does an ad or, uh, act of uh, cruelty, it cannot go in vain. It is a maxim called, as you sow, you will reap. Now, this principle is important. Now, depending upon you, our mental evolution, we should be able to consume this idea in many ways. For example, a Vedantin is least bothered about the Swarga and uh, Naraka and all that, because his evolution is such he understands that you have to transcend this Papa Punya business. So he is not bothered about it. For somebody who is yet to go there, they want some nice manifestation to understand this. You know, Josurga and Naraka are, you know, uh, ideas of that. So therefore, it is not so much about uh, the physical existence of it. It is a cardinal principle. As you sow, you will reap. Now, do plants and animals also go through Punar Janma? If so, can humans be born as other forms and vice versa? Yes, all these are possible. Uh, from whatever little we know, understand from the logic of karma theory, I think plants and animals will also evolve. And uh, only thing is their evolution is unidirectional because they cannot hold them accountable for their acts because it's all driven program. But moment you step into a human kingdom, 
then we are clearly responsible for the act and there is every possibility from human kingdom we can slide back to a plant kingdom or animal kingdom how is it possible let's say i am a charter accountant i qualified as a charter accountant i go to a large company i'm managing the treasury operations i did mischief i did uh, swindle money i did uh, all kinds of mischief then what will happen they will just throw me out and if i try it a few times in any other company that comes to the my my uh, my whole ca my certification will be taken back by the ca institute and i'll be uh, stripped of all my thing and i'll come back to a more or less like a beggar that's what will happen in the same way our acts of bad acts will come back to us now at, as you can see there is this indian game board of game uh, board game called snakes and ladders that is precisely the idea there are snakes and ladders and if you have a old board game in your house please go and take and see there are things written in in the mouth of a snake written at the foot of the ladder go and read it it will explain this whole karma theory so beautifully while we are playing that snake and ladder game okay so i think uh, with these i will stop the questions because we need to sort of go into uh, today's uh, topic uh, 